Monday night, the Lakers blew their third straight double-digit lead in playoff games against the Nuggets in the closeout game of conference finals last year here in L.A. Lakers were up 15 with 10.50 left in the third quarter, and they lost by two. In game one of this series, Lakers were up 12 with 6.05 left in the second quarter, and they lost by 11. Then in Monday night's game two, the Lakers were up 20 with 10 minutes left in the third quarter, and they lost by two. So, Rachel, you've been bullish on the Nuggets all season, but how do you explain this? I mean, the reason the Lakers keep coughing up double-digit mm -hmm. leads has to do with nobody in a Lakers uniform. It's Nikola Jokic. LeBron James is getting a taste of his own medicine. You know, all those years when he played in the Eastern Conference for Cleveland, Miami, and, and he just, we kept calling the finals the LeBron James Invitational because no one else had a shot in that conference. No one was getting there. And it goes back to Michael Jordan in the Eastern Conference when he was having his reign. Guess what? That's what's happening with Nikola Jokic right now mm -hmm. and the team that has been built around him and the function that they have, especially as games continue. They all know what they're supposed to do at the end of games. Jamal Murray, obviously, knows what he is supposed to do. And Nikola Jokic cleared out the rest of those players on that last shot of Jamal Murray. So when you look at what happened, Jokic had a hand in that play as well. And it is exactly what LeBron used to do to everyone else. And now LeBron is 39 years old, and his team is not the team that is the brick wall anymore. And I think that you can, if you want to lay blame inside the Lakers, you can look at Rob Palenka and say, hey, this team got swept by the Nuggets last year, and your answer was run it back. So that is something that at the time I was sort of, uh, I don't know what we're doing here, a few guys. Pieces, a few pieces, yeah. but but not not significantly <laughs> enough. And, and look, I do not think Darvin Ham deserves as much blame as Laker Nation mm -hmm. sometimes does. But I, I do want to show you guys this quote from Anthony Davis. I think the control room has it. Um, this is what he said afterward. He said, we have stretches of the games where we just don't know what we're doing on both ends of the floor. And those are the ones that caught up, cost us. He's like, now we've got two days to get it right, ready to get, win game three on Thursday. If you're in game, what, 84, I don't know what the play-in and, and, mm -hmm. the, and the tournament, whatever, the game 86? 90 games. Game 90 game, get 90 game of the season. You have stretches where you don't know what you're doing on both ends of the floor? That wasn't the first time. I was literally about to say that. I That's know. not the first time mm -hmm. that AD felt that way. Now, you say, well, why, Skip? To be honest with you, I don't know entirely why. There's, there's, I could point to a lot of different things. I could start off by saying the third quarter, you're surrendering points in the third quarter where, to the point where the uh, Denver Nuggets have, have uh, the Lakers have led by 19 points total in game one and two, but the Denver Nuggets erased that in the third quarter. They just completely erased that. Now you look at, you can go all the way back to the Western Conference Final in game four in the fourth quarter, we led by 15. Okay, these first two games, in 20, in game two, we led in the third quarter, erased that. Led 10 in the fourth quarter. Then you go to game one, in the, in the uh, second quarter, it was leading by 12. Number one, we don't have anybody that played defense on the three ball. Mm. They all kind of just stand around and challenge these guys to shoot threes. Whatever reason that is, I don't know. I have maybe no that, idea. Maybe, this that is, may, maybe that is a joker issue where... You damned if you do, damned if you don't. Because if I race out there and leave him sitting underneath, then now what? Okay, so you look at that. And you say to yourself, how does that change? Well, we talked about it from game one with LeBron James in the fourth quarter. He didn't participate. You say participation award. <laughs> he didn't participate at all in the fourth quarter for whatever reason. But he changed that course in the, third, in the fourth quarter last game, but then it, nobody else participated mm. in the fourth quarter. So it's like what AD is saying, as stretches in the game, they don't have an identity of understanding on both ends of the floors what the hell they're supposed to be doing. Mm. That points back to coaching, okay? That just points back to coaching. And you would say, well, LeBron's the coach. He, he should be getting him. He's the leader. He's the coach. Mm. Well, sometimes, sometimes that may be true, but when the coach is Darwin Ham, you call timeouts. You bring them to the sideline like you see Spo do, like you see Doc do, like you see uh, uh, Ty Missoula, Ty Lu. Bring them over here and talk to them and get them to understand what it is that you're trying to do. Yeah. Instead of standing there with your arms folded like you feel Jackson and having them just run up and down the court. I think that's the... And I understand you don't ever want to be a coach killer, but 
I'm only giving you the message, okay? I didn't create the message. Mm. Anthony Davis mm. has created the message for you to be able to see, and this is not the first time throughout the course of the year that mm -hmm. he's questioned the coaching staff and what they've been able to do to get these guys True. to play. Okay, Rachel, are you saying that at this point in stage of LeBron's career, or let's even throw Anthony Davis in there, mm -hmm. that Joker is just a way better basketball player than both of them? Are yes. we there? Is that yes. where we've, we've arrived? Yes. Okay. Because guess what? They had an MVP vote this year, and LeBron was not one of the finalists. And okay. Nick Jokic is going to win. All right. So here's what I've seen. And the reason I had no issue with what Rob Polinka did or did not do after last year was he did add Cam Reddish and Gabe Vincent, who's not been healthy the whole year. But here we go again. I don't know what happened to Christian Wood. I thought he was going to be back. But the Andy, point is, yeah, yeah. okay. the point is, playoff basketball, as you both well know, is about imposing your will. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, it, it really comes down to one man imposes his will on the other team. For years and years, it was Michael Jordan. For many other years, it was Kobe. It was Kareem. It was Magic. It was That's how you do it. That's how you become dynastic. You impose your will. When LeBron was in the Eastern Conference, he imposed his will. He bullied. He, he looked down his nose at those baby raptors up there in <laughs> Toronto and just clowned them when he played against them. Or the Indiana Pacers of Paul George. He just basically just scoffed at him and laughed at him and stepped on him. That's, that's how you do it. And all of a sudden, I've seen a team that's good enough to hang in and hang in and hang in. It's good enough to put itself in position again and again and again against the now defending champs, the eventual champs last year. You're right there, you're right there, you're right there. And now it's up to one of your two stars. We, we call Anthony Davis a top five player in this league. It's up to one or the other to impose his will when it matters most in the fourth quarter. And every single time, it's been Joker and then Jamal. Joker will do it for a while. And then at the bitter end, it'll be Jamal who mm -hmm. say, I got this. Mm -hmm. It happened again the other night. I got, I got it. Mm -hmm. if, if LeBron's going to miss his shot, just give me the damn ball. Back to the book that you wrote. Give me the damn ball and get out of my way because I'm going to go do this. Yes. And I'll end it. And he ended it. Okay, so so what do I keep seeing? I, I guess you're right. I guess Joker and Jamal are just on another level from both LeBron and AD. Yeah, it's hard last, for me to... The last four minutes, five minutes yeah, of the game. Uh, but it's the just entire happened. game's not the case. No, the last no. Little... no. Five minutes of the games okay. is where they turn into the superstars, and we kind of just become role players, right. so to speak. Okay. Well, look, Jokic is a better player than LeBron right now at this point in LeBron's but career. I'm not count but, I'm not, but I'm not saying that he's not a better player. I don't even look at it that way. I look at AD well, in the Joker. They cancel each other out. They literally cancel each other out, Rachel. And okay. Anthony Davis, to me, is a better... First of all, I think Jamal Murray is criminally underrated. I don't understand uh, well, why not he doesn't anymore. get... Not at this desk. I, I mean, mean, he doesn't okay. get the, the, yeah. the accolades and, no. and the things that I think he deserves. However... Especially in the post. I would still right. say that Anthony Davis is a better player. All right. But we know from decades in the NBA, counting on big men to close games is always a risky proposition. And that's why the Jamal-Joker combination... It's beautiful. Or should it I call him Jamal scary. and Gru yeah. now, maybe? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. But, but um, is Anthony <laughs> Davis really a big man? I mean... Cause, cause he'll pull up from the elbow. He'll yeah, pull up from three. That's what big men do. He'll put he's a modern big man. Yeah, he's, okay. You've seen, you've seen. Today okay. Big man. He, he was a guard until he was a senior in high school. Yeah, you know, really like, and then he feet. sprouted up. But he yeah. can, he can close out the games. If you go and you look at these ten games that the Lakers have been dominated or, or lost, I'm not gonna call them dominated because they have lost. Anthony Davis, for whatever reason, hadn't gotten the same touches. Yep. In those last well, five minutes go. of the well, game, maybe. that All he's right. gotten in the first three quarters and some change. That's, he just hasn't. Okay. That's maybe so, what the complaining about the. So step games. back and look at last year. So four times in four fourth quarters, you're right there. And LeBron just couldn't make a shot. So he goes seven of 23 combined in the four fourth quarters and one of 10 from three. And then we get down to the closeout game. Not that they had any prayer left, but you, you have a shred of pride left. Mm -hmm. 
And LeBron's got it in his hands, and I know we can go on and on, but he's got two shots at it, and, and he doesn't even get the ball to the rim. One's a late clock win, and he sh I think we have him. Uh, he shot it, it off the side of the backboard. The back I've board. seen it 70 times. Yeah, and then Jamal made a great defensive play. Here's LeBron. It's a late clock. That's a prayer, and it doesn't hit anything. And then late, and we've got one more shot here. Okay, we got that, and then that was Aaron Gordon on LeBron. Then, then Jamal cut him off at the pass and got his hands on the ball. Mm -hmm. And I loved it that LeBron put his head down and tried to get to the basket, but he couldn't get the ball up. Okay, so whatever, you got two shots to tie the game, and you don't tie the game. So now he, he takes a lot of criticism, justifiable criticism for those four, because he's the greatest scorer in the history of the game. And we come to game one this year, and you scratch and claw your way back into the game. Austin Reeves makes a couple of big shots. And, and all of a sudden, I'm going, LeBron, where are you? And you're with me. I don't know where he is. Is he pouting about it? Is he just saying, OK, I took all that heat off this. You guys do it. I'll, I'll just stay out of the way. I'm going to disconnect tonight. I'm going to disengage. You guys do it. I'll just give it to D'Lo. You're giving it to the coldest hand on the floor, and he winds up going one for nine from three for the game. And I'm saying, you're better than that because they, they're looking to you, and you're just saying, no, you guys, you, you do it because everybody thinks you can do it. That's all I hear is you guys do it. And it's hard to watch. And I think it, I know our friend Lil Wayne texts me. He's just out of his mind about it because it just looks pathetic. Okay? And yet, we flip the switch, and we go to game two. He was all-time great for much of the fourth quarter in game two. Mm -hmm. And I got to tell you, he looked better than Joker or Jamal or both of them put together because there were stretches. He made the back-to-back -back threes. He stole the ball from Jamal. When